Greetings and welcome to Choices. This morning I'm reminded of the word of God according to John 6. It says the spirit gives life. The flesh comes from nothing. The words that I have spoken to you, they are full of spirit and life. New International Version. And today we are grateful. We are in the month of April. God has been good to us. We look around and there's so much to be thankful for. Wherever you are, we want to encourage you to be thankful for the goodness and mercy of God. God has been able to deliver us. I'm sure we can testify of it individually from different trials and troubles. And this is what God is able to do. According to Matthew 11, we are reminded that anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand new living translation and so we want to encourage you heed the word of god and beyond that remember where there's sound advice where there's good advice wherever you are don't just hear let's listen let's understand let's take action let's choose to take actions that could improve our lives improve the lives of our loved ones this is a set of choices and we encourage you to be safe gentlemen you know, the, the pandemic has certainly created lots of problems for us in this country. Um, lots of problems for us as, as, as a people, as a nation. And we have a duty, uh, this particular program, we see ourselves as, as having a duty to, to bring incarnational leadership um, to the people of this country. That is moving into their neighborhoods and... Uh, understanding what is happening and to see how we could how we could change the status quo we have a duty to be shalom leaders not just leaders who will bring uh peace but we will look for the prosperity and the blessings of our people so this is how you know we see ourselves as as being transformational in the process particularly as it relates to the uh to the pandemic i think it was his excellency um Dr. Muhammad Irfan Ali, I saw ed some headlines in a couple of newspapers, a couple of daily saying that the reckless living of persons, you know, have brought uh, much trouble to our country because some persons are not adhering to, 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 to the rules and to what was said in terms of our, in terms of conduct and behavior. But like I said, we have a duty to be incarnational. We have a duty to be, uh, to bring shalom. Um, to this nation, and this is what this program would have been doing um, for months now, because we really um, want to see people um, prosper, people develop, and so on. And the wise man <coughs> said in, in Proverbs, said, whoever remains stiff-necked, and after many rebukes, after many rebukes, remains stiff-necked, naked after many rebukes, will suddenly be destroyed without remedy. You know, there are some people who continue to be stubborn. This is what the wise man said. The stubborn behavior will ultimately result in the destruction of people with no remedy. And when we look at what we've been seeing in the, the COVID hospital, for example, there was a time when you had nine persons, 10 persons. Now you have 60, 70 persons in there and then 15 persons on ventilators or 15 persons in ICU and so on. So these numbers have been rising considerably. And why? Because persons are not responding, persons are not uh, conducting themselves the way they should, they, they should conduct themselves. And what is unfortunate is that people have been affected, infected, afflicted, um, and they've not gone anywhere. This thing came to them because of how persons are living. And uh, I'm sure we will hear more about that even as we move on in the program because we have someone on this set today who would have had that kind of experience and would have gone through but would have survived. Survived because of the care, survived because of the concern, survived because of you know, the general attitude in terms of how, how one should behave. And, and I'm sure this brother did not go anywhere really to pick this thing up by nightlife and doing different things. But this is what the reckless behavior has been causing when persons, you know, do not respond the way they should respond.
So we thank God by the grace of God, people could recover. And like I said, we have this duty to bring shalom and incarnational leadership to the people of this nation. Gentlemen. Dr. Hudson, if I may add, um, in addition to what you would have said, um, there are persons who still believe based on the, the utterances and based on the way they conduct themselves that this virus is not real. Um, they still um, believe, they still peddle um, information that it's a hoax and all of that. And, you know, I, I know it's real. And to have, um, for example, someone like uh, Reverend um, Singh um, to dear and close to us to have experienced it, you know, I, I would want to ask him now if he can really um, share with us um, his experience having been stricken by the virus. Thank you very much, Dr. Lee. I want to start out by saying that the coronavirus is real. It's a killer. I contracted the virus in the third week of January, an experience I would not like to relive. How it started? It started with a cold followed by fever. The relevant home remedies were applied, but there was no relief. And my condition became worse. Finally, I visited the Georgetown Hospital only to discover that I was positive with the coronavirus. I had a raging fever inside, loss of weight, appetite, smell, and taste. I was becoming weaker and weaker, but for God. I'll say it again, but for God, my trust, faith, and confidence was in him. And he deliver and heal my body. I also want to say thanks to my eldest daughter, Ruth, along with my wife, who worked tirelessly with me twice a day for about three weeks. I was given fever grass tea to drink, also a mixture of ginger, turmeric, and lemon. Also, a mixture of coconut oil, lime, and baking soda was applied to keep the fever under control, but nothing was happening. But I want to thank God today that I am free from COVID. I revisited the Georgetown Hospital, had a next checkup, and I was told by the doctor that I am free from COVID. My advice to all and sundry, is to protect yourself and family. I said early on, this virus is real, it's a killer. I am speaking from my personal experience, not what somebody said to me or what I heard. I passed through it and you heard me saying early on, I would not like to relive this experience. It's not a nice experience, it's not easy. And so we have to protect ourselves at all times. Please wear a mask. Wash your hands regularly. Do what you're supposed to do. We've been advised every day on the radio, on the television. We've been given guidelines. Please, let's follow the guidelines. Maintain the distance of about six feet from each other. Take the vaccine. You know, it was something that we were praying for since we heard about the coronavirus. We were praying, praying that we would have a vaccine that would help us. Now it is here. And oh my, there's so much negative comments. I want to challenge you. You heard it was said by the professionals. I am not by the doctors. It would not prevent you from getting the COVID, the COVID virus, but it will protect you from all what people are experiencing. You would not have to go through this trauma. Take the vaccine. I challenge you. Remember. Life is precious. It is better to be sorry, or sorry, it's better to be safe. It is better to be safe than to be sorry. And so I want to encourage us all. Let's do what we are supposed to do. Life is a gift from God. Carry it, 
and cherish it. Thank you. Passing, thanks for sharing. What was it like in terms of isolation? Did you isolate? Yes, Bishop, I did for the 14 days, but it had with me, I had to go beyond that. It almost took me about three weeks. Being in isolation is not easy. You're in the home. I was in the home, self-isolation. I had no contact with my wife. It was, it was lonely. You lie in the bed, you want to talk to somebody, but you have to In order for you to protect yourself and your loved one, you have to adhere your way. And so I, I, I was isolated for about three weeks. As I said early on, it was not easy, but I had to do it for my interests and for the interests of my family. We, we, we spoke several times, not very many times, but we spoke at critical times on the, um, on the telephone. Um, would you say that this was an ordinary flu or this was this was rough? How, how would you describe it? Yeah, of course. I thought it was an ordinary flu. The cold and the fever. And so I took things for granted. And as I said, I used the homemade remedy, but this one, it did not help. My body was becoming weaker and weaker. And so as I said, I took things for granted, and I would encourage you, if you have a cold and a fever, don't take, uh, don't take things for granted. It might look to you like it's just an ordinary cold, but it might be something more serious than you're thinking about. Our health is important. Our health is important. Don't wait until it's too late before you deal with it from the first sign or symptoms that you have. My advice and encouragement to you is to go and to have a medical checkup. Thank God for doctors and nurses, and they would be able to tell you if it's COVID or not. So you would know how to deal with it. You're not a man that, as far as, far as we all know, um, you're not a man given to riotous living, the wildlife and all of that. You've got a strict regime that you follow. Um, perhaps, you, can you share with us what are your thoughts as to how you might have contracted the virus? Excellent question. Excellent question. I am amazed on to today how I contracted this virus. I wear my mask. I separate it from people. I try to do the best that I can. So when I was told that you contracted the disease, the first thing that flashed in my mind is how we You know, we have to make sure that we protect ourselves. I can't answer the question how and where because I don't sport, I don't party. I don't, as a matter of fact, when I don't have to leave my home, I remain at home. I find work to do in the yard. I find work to do in the house, just to make sure that I'm well protected. And so, sir, the question how you contracted it and where, I really can't answer that question. It just shows how much we have to be very, very careful, extra careful as we go about our daily chores. Reverend Singh, you spoke about the importance of being at home and staying at home when you, when you don't have anywhere to go. Uh, would you say that the sanitization of your home is, is important? You know, we use the different uh, remedies. Do you see that as an important aspect with the fight against this, this virus? Extremely important because we leave our homes and we go out. We may have to use public transportation. We are in touch, we are touching things. We have to be among and our people are not keeping the distance as they should. So sometimes we might be in close proximity with somebody 
who probably may have the virus and they don't even know. And so I believe sanitizing the home is extremely important. I did it. I called for a specialist who sanitized the entire home upstairs, downstairs. And I make sure that I was adhering to all the regulation. And so sanitizing is important. The knobs that you hold, the door that you open, and I was told by uh, the specialist uh, that the curtain that we have to the windows and the cushion in the chairs, I was told this, I don't know who it is. As I said, I am not a medical personnel. The virus is attracted to it. The kind of curtains that we use to the window and the kind of uh, the, the, the seat that we have in the chair, you know what we cover the chair with? It the virus would stay around for a long time. So I had everything sanitized. And so I want to encourage you, do the best you could sanitize your home. You live in the road, the home to go on the road, you come back, sanitize, be safe. Be safe and not sorry. Dr. Singh, Singh. would you say that when we go therefore in the public environment and return, that we should be careful what we do with the clothing we were wearing. Should we throw it in the wash? Should we clean it? Should we go and hang it up in the wall robe to dry? Or what what do you recommend in such a after such an experience? Some people said to me, whenever they go back home, they leave their clothes by the door outside. And they make sure that when they enter the home, well, they're, they're really on the wheel. I don't expect them to be naked because they're not in the garden of Eden. They're at home and they have, might have family or so. And so the, I was told is that they leave their clothes at the door. And so what they do, they bathe and then they wash the clothes. So, you know, we have to be so careful. Now, this is something that we cannot see. It's an element that we cannot see. And so because we cannot see, we have to take all the necessary precaution and to do so. I would recommend it, yes, especially if you go into the public, you don't know who is who, you could do it. Be safe. You know, you know I'm listening, um, Reverend Singh, as we're having this conversation, the persons who might be listening to this program and they might be saying, who oh, really they talking? And, um, you know, all these questions and so on, and, you know, we got to live. Um, and, you know, it is for that very kind of disposition, disposition um, that some have described as reckless um, has caused this, this pandemic to, um, to, you know, to get out of hand because of how people have been responding and, and, and behaving. Um, just a question. How would you treat now after what you've gone through? You know, some of us, we like to have visitors and entertain visitors and so on. Would you just allow someone to come to your house and walk in or, or, or what? What, what? What you would recommend? I mean, you've gone through this. Someone comes to visit you. You know, we still, we're human beings and human beings like to interact and so on. I'm not saying that people may not come and go, but, but how would you treat the, the people who might want to visit your home? From my experience, what I passed through, my door is closed. When I see you at the gate, I have an upstairs and downstairs. I will talk to you from upstairs. I am keeping my distance. Now, there are some people who would want to come and sympathize with you. They're forgetting that they have to keep the distance. And so they want to come and hug you. Or they're doing it innocently. It's not deliberately, but like seeing you, after having seen you for a long time, and now they see you, they forget that they want to come and hug you and, uh, you know, to befriend you. No, I understand this, but I have to safeguard myself. You need to do the same. Not everybody, and please, if somebody comes to visit you, please keep your mask on. Never mind you in the home, keep your mask on and allow them to stay the distance, Okay. People need to understand this. You know, the reason why we are having this program week after week, I'll tell you something, viewers. We love you. 
and we appreciate you. We want you to be around for a long while. And so this program, if you notice week after week, and we are not going to stop because you're precious, you're valuable, you're priceless, and we cannot afford to lose you. I almost lost my life, but I thank God for his grace. And so we have to be careful. I don't encourage people at this moment to visit me. One of the things I plan to do, because uh, I have to wait until the period is up, and I personally, as soon as I'm available, as soon as uh, I could take the vaccine, definitely I would go and take the vaccine. So we have to watch no. it. We have to be on the lookout at all times. Reverend Singh. Whether at home, the workplace, or the, the market. Reverend Singh, um, I mean, yes, go ahead. Sir. What would you say? Your, your mental state was in the midst of everything that you went through. How were you able to cope with this mentally and, and even spiritually? Mentally. I thought that I would lose it. I wasn't thinking straight. I tell you something. At this particular time, when you're on that bed of affliction, you're weak. You can't help yourself. Mentally, all manner of things pass through. You know what I find out? When you're weak, your mind, your mind, it starts to roam. And so I was mentally, I was weak. I really couldn't think the way that I, that I should. One of the things that happened to me and that was very strange that I was concerned about. There are a lot of people, including my family, who are dead and gone. When I was on that bed of affliction, helpless, these people start to appear, these spirits start to appear to me. I start seeing these persons who were dead and gone. My faith in God kept me. And I want to encourage you, I don't care how low you might be. I don't care what you're passing through. Don't give up. God is our source. I kept my feet, even though I was weak, mentally, spiritually, spiritually, yes, physically. I kept my feet, my confidence, and my trust in God. And I'll tell you something. It's only God could help us. God helped me. Helpless. God helped me. God came through for me, and he's willing to do it for you. Don't lose faith. I love Maxwell Tom. This is not a time to give up. You cannot afford to give up. No. Your faith is your most precious possession. Put it to work, and I'll tell you something. God is going to honor your faith. So mentally, spiritually, physically, I use the term that I understand. I was almost down and out, but for God. Reverend Singh, how how your family feel? They were, were they really they was worried. And I was okay. told only yesterday by my second daughter that they probably discuss it and decide I am not going to go to the hospital. They got to apply the homemade remedy. There was distress. They were sad, knowing the father, young, fresh, and green, with all my strength and everything. And then all of a sudden, pop, this calamity happened. So my daughter said to me, my eldest daughter said to me, she said, Dad, I could tell you no, but I couldn't tell you then. We were afraid that we would lose you. She said on the Monday, and I remember that Monday, I was sinking deeper and deeper and deeper. And it really says that I felt that I was lost. And that same Monday, because my daughter used to be there with me twice a day, she said, Dad, I thought we would have lose you. This is how low I was. But you can't stop God. You can't stop God. From the Amen. Oh, you know, Reverend Singh? referring to when you said their dad, young, fresh, and strong. Who are you referring to? Fresh and myself. They are accustomed to me green. being active. Young, fresh, and green. 
Uh, so now see me that condition. Uh -huh. They're not accustomed to that. Reverend, oh God. Thing. God. If, if, if we can go back to um, one of your previous comments, you know, you said you spoke about bathing. And um, I will tell you, you already have a convert because my little four-year-old um, for the last year is maternal grandmother. As soon as he comes through the door, she's having him, well, at the beginning, you have to bathe. So that was since last year, March, when we locked down over here. So every day from since then, as soon as he comes home, you can't touch him. He's dada, you bid. Mama, you bid. Um, uh, brother, you bid. His, his two elder brothers, you can't hug me. You have to bid first. So he goes and bid, and then he comes back. So you have a, you have a convert and you have a follower. And we hope that those who, are, those who are listening to this program, that they also hear you, it resonates, and then they act, like Pastor Joshua said at the beginning, act. Thank you for sharing, sir. This coronavirus wouldn't, the coronavirus wasn't, would not last forever, but while it is here, let's protect ourselves. Be very, very careful. Pastor Singh, um, what should an individual do if they are there? close contact with someone who has COVID-19? They need to go and have a check. You are in close contact with someone who contracted the disease. What you need to do, you remember you have to protect yourself as all time as Brother Billy said last week, it's like two boxers in the ring. The referee is going to tell them before they even tell the force punch. Protect yourself at all times. And if you are certain, if you're positive that you was with this person or close to this person or cl in close contact with this person that had, go and protect yourself. Make sure that you're certain. Yes, you're either free or you have. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Reverend Randolph Singh, for sharing with us and um, listening to you and. We are so happy that um, you shared. Um, we missed you when you were fighting. We were standing there with you. And um, we hope that this would be a blessing to all of us in Guyana, overseas. And uh, we pray that you will protect yourself at all times. From this set, to you and your family, be blessed. I'm Salacia on behalf of the set reminding you that your whole life is the sum of your choices. God bless you.